we had started our integration chapter and we've gone through the, the basics of integration. Uh, we have seen how we can manipulate or manage the integration. We have discussed how we look at document transformation, how we set up the attributes, how we set up the maps of a given integration, how we uh, map the values of uh, internal external values between our system and the target system. And how do we manage that? How do we configure that? And we have been specifically looking at the core connector for workers. So today we're going to see how we can launch an integration and how do we go about that? So we've been looking at integrations. So uh, till now we've been discussing the worker effective changes in the face. This is a workday delivered uh, integration uh, provided by Workday as a standardized template. And basically you can use this template to exchange or share workers data with any of the platform or your partners out there, wherever you need to share the worker details or worker information with uh, your partner or your vendor. So if you want to create an integration from scratch, the task would be, all right, uh, I think before even I jump onto that, let me show you one more. Uh, report view integration. So in this system, there are about 1,484 integrations are available in GMS tenant. So many of them are already standardized templates or delivered integration systems that are designed and managed and delivered by Workday. So they will continue to update it. They will continue to put on more options. And this is a very strong focus area for Workday, where they continue to build and expand the integration systems that connects to majority of the vendors out there. For example, if you need to connect Workday to say Azure or Active Directory or Okta or CyberArk, you would find a worker interface, uh, the integration system to work with those as well. So what Workday does is they continuously uh, partner up with the majority of the vendors out there, continue to design, evolve, and update their integrations to accommodate any and every requirement that is available uh, out there and put it in the standard template as a configurable option. So many times you may not need to create a new integration from scratch, but you can use an existing Workday template, which is available in the system, and you can configure it, set it up, and use it in such a way that you're able to complete your transactions for the integrations. For example, if, even if I look for worker, See, core connector worker. So here you will see the integration template name, the integration system, the category, the integration attributes, the attribute names, integration maps, and map name. So using one of the existing connectors or integration system, you may use it as a baseline and configure it accordingly and use it yourself. So, but if I need to create my own integration system, 
I can go to the task called create integration system. Say worker changes. So I can use an existing template if I don't need to configure from scratch. Say worker effective change interface, I can use that template. Then I can configure all the integration services that are available in the integration. And if I have any customized integration that I need to do, such as like I need to add any additional data, any additional information, uh, any other out of the ordinary requirements, I can set them up from here. Let's see, worker, additional worker fields, add it here. And then I press OK. So my basic template for my integration for worker effective changes is now created. Now, if I need to make changes to the integration attributes or integration maps, I can go to my integration system, configure integration attributes. Then I can go through the list, say, for the worker effective changes, I want to add a document tag. So we can say ZT. WCI or worker effective changes. And if I need to restrict to my environment, like I would like to see this uh, integration or these tags only in testing or sandbox or production or something like that. I can select to or restrict it to an environment. So if I need to add any document tags, any audits for jobs, required field validation, max field validation. So the worker DIS where we can set the attributes for organization reference ID for the summary selection. Is it required for launch? Effective sec, then country code or type, address usage. So all these information uh, may seem a little overwhelming in the beginning, but in order to set up an integration uh, with a partner, Generally, there's an agreement on the values and you would have a integration document template shared by your vendor as to what and how you need to configure your workday template to connect to the system. So you will get an instruction set from your partner when you're setting up an integration to work or connect with them. Next, I can then go to, again, integration system, then field overrides, if there's any.
So for example, if there's any fields or particular requirements that we discussed yesterday that if you need to add any parameters, any integration document fields that we need to change from standard configuration of standard uh, information, we can put it on the parameters and set them up in the particular business object that is going to be part of the uh, worker effective changes integration. Let's go to field attributes. So here I would be able to see all the fields and values that are going to be included in my integration. So for example, if I go here, I can see the employee ID, eligibility, worker summary. So all the fields that I would like to be included in the output. So some of them are default that they would need to go, which are mandatory for this integration. And then the others are selectable, such as I would like to have personal data section, personal data section, and then identification section, related personal data. And if I need to set the maximum length of the value of that field, I can configure it here in the last column. And say I need education data, position data, compensation data, compensation plan data, employee contract data, leave of absence, payment election, say collective agreement, and say I need additional information as well. And I can mark them as either included in output and also if they are a mandatory required field, I can select them here as well. Like if I select go to personal data section, here maybe I can select all the fields and if I need to remove any, Say, city of birth is not important for me in my integration, or it's not a required value. And say, preferred communication language is not required for my details. I don't want race and city information to be shared in the vendor. And then say primary position ID and primary position country. I don't require these fields. If I go to my compensation data section, for example, I may require all these information and say, I don't need this. See, I don't need the position ID, but I need the compensation grade, the compensation changes reason, say compensation summary. in communications. Say I don't need the employee address, phone number, email, 
say related person information or position data section. In the position details, say I need all these information, worker type, primary position type, job exempt. So full-time exchange. See, I don't require paid FTE or I do require payment type. And say so on. So I can set up all these uh, fields that are going to be included in my integration. So I can set up each and every field in each and every section of the workers uh, integration, and I can configure them or include them or exclude them from the report with this interface. So next I can come and configure my mappings or integration maps. Now maps are what values do you have internally in Workday? And in my partner system, what values are they expecting when I'm sending that information to them. It is somewhat similar to when we do an XML override in the custom report or give the XML values for particular fields. It is similar to what we can set up here. Say for example, if I go to address usage type, say I have couple of information here within my system, say. So here I have billing and I have mailing. Then maybe I have say, remember two, then I have my shipping information then say work from home. And when I send this information like the address usage type, the address usage type information within my integration to my partner, how are they expecting this in address usage type as the heading override for the XML? Say this could be bill. It could be say mail. This could be remit. ship, say work from home, so these values has to match, the integration maps has to match with what is in your system that you're trying to send the information from, which object, which values, and how is your vendor expecting those values to be shared with them. So these integration maps help you set this up because these values like bill, mail, remit, ship, WFH would have been provided to you by your partner that how are they expecting the 
address information or address usage type to be sent to them in the, with these values as a heading. This is integration maps specifically. Where we are mapping the, mapping the fields that we are going to be sharing with our vendor and how are the internal and external values are going to be mapped. Say for example, a very common one, say gender. Say I want to add three fields here. And you can see for each value, I have a limited list of values that are available within the system. See the vendor expecting an F for female, M for male, and maybe ND for not declared. The rest of the information, I would say, yeah, let's keep it as static. So now we have set up the uh, integration attributes, field attributes, maps, and let's configure the integration services. So we did set this up before in the beginning when we were starting our integration that which services I would like to be included within my integration template. So there might be some services that you may not need for your particular integration with your particular vendor. So again, these uh, interface templates like we've copied this from worker when we created our integration. So we use all the existing uh, integration services and templates that was available in the, the worker integration. So all the information or the template services, integration template services has been included in the list. And I can pick and choose as to which one I require for my integration and which one I do not require to run it as my integration. Right. So I can set the, the initial service to invoke optional and then enabled and I can choose and select. So some of them are by default, I cannot make changes to it. Some of them are selectable. Now here, if you see that custom integration services, we have created an integration service called additional worker fields. So let me click on this on a new tab. Now these are the additional fields I'm going to bring in into my integration from the system. Say base language CD, language CD, first name dash last name. And say, I would like to bring in an additional field called CT underscore. I'm just giving a, uh, a pseudo name. So this is not an actual book day field. So let's say batch underscore ID. So this is an additional field that I've created that are not part of my integration, but I would like, or I would need to send it alongside with my integration and pull the data from Workday into these particular fields in the format that I require. So integration system, let's jump back to it.
right? So a scenario, uh, this is generally how you create an integration for worker changes. Similarly, for payroll, it's a different integration system. Uh, for say benefits, there would be different integration systems. And there are multiples and multiples of integration that are made available by Workday for different purposes with different types of organizations. Okay. So for example, uh, if you are working with say, uh, the vision uh, of America, which provides insurances for your, uh, for corporate clients. So let me see if I have the integration available for benefits. So I N T S. So I S. Say vision. So vision benefits of America. In fact, let me select all these integrations. And say for United States, Aetna is a very popular vendor. Many of the corporate companies would be using Aetna for their. as a medical provider. So here you will see CCB Aetna. The integration template is Aetna Medical Dental Vision Life and Disability and Health Savings Account. Then the template description. It is HIPAA compliant 884 integration template for Aetna. Here you will see all the integration services that are going to be included in this. Enrollment. And then sequence generated delivery services. So these are the integration attributes for Aetna, like WB and outbound service, benefit plans. So these are the Aetna plans you're going to select for your integration because you're currently creating an integration for a specific vendor called Aetna. But all the plans for Aetna, like dental, uh, HDHP, PPO, DMO, HMO, PPO, whatever that you are providing on behalf of Aetna to your employees or to your partners within the, your tenant can include those values in the benefit plans. Then the second part is the citizenship status, like naturalized citizens or citizens of the United States, include future covered end dates is no. Then the HIPAA version that you, uh, Aetna and your company would uh, agree on. So this is going to be say 5010. Carrier output heap by EDI, say yes. Interchange ID qualifier sender. So that is your sender ID. When you're sending your integration to uh, Aetna, you'll see this value and the interchange sender ID. And all these informations are now specific to your integration with Aetna. Application sender code, application receiver code, master policy number, plan sponsor name, sponsor ID, insurer ID code, say municipality postal code, country name, and then do not use health coverage. So this is going to be depreciated field. So whenever you see a do not use, it means that in the in the next release or the one after that. This field is going to go away and will be replaced with the alternate field. So documentation policy, say 180 days. Now if I look at the integration maps, you'll see a vast variety of integration maps for this particular integration. Like enrollment relationship. Internally in our tenant, we call we refer to as a child of an employee as child, but they would like the value to be 19 when you're sending the child information, when you're sending the domestic partner information in enrollment relationship map or the map provider, for domestic partner, we'll be sending 53 and so on. The so position type, default value is going to be full-time because that's how we are going to set it up. 
And if it's a full time, then it's FT. If it's part time, it's going to be PD. Then the gender information, marital status, like in our system, we may have, say, divorced, married, partnered, separated, single, widowed. But uh, Aetna is expecting these values to be, say, D, M, B, S, I, W. The healthcare classifications, CDMO, SDEN, which should be most probably dental. HDHP is high deductible uh, plan. Their, their value expectation is HLT, HMO is HMO, POS is POS, PPO is PPO. Now the coverage level codes for employee by default is employee, but then employee plus one dependent say E1D, employee plus domestic partner is two, employee plus family is fam, and eligible employee only is EMP. So again, you will find a lot of map values that you may not be using or sending in your particular integration. But these values are set up uh, by Workday in their discussions with Aetna and code development. And maybe in one of the companies, you may need to have this monetary amount to be sent. Maybe this current company may not need it, the way it is set up, because every company can set up their compensation plans differently, the kind of coverage levels, the kind of coverage level codes, the kind of it's a healthcare classifications, the marital status, maybe it may differ from country to country. Your enrollment relationships may differ from country to country, from company to company. Some company might not provide uh, coverage to parents, so you may not need to include it there. Some companies may not support domestic partners in their uh, benefit enrollment. So you may not need to add these values here. Next part is the business process definition. Here, if you remember the EAB, uh, we had get data, then transform data, and then deliver data. So for your, every single integration, you will have a separate <coughs> business process uh, for your integration. So here you can see the business process definition is integration process even for CCBA at not top level. And here we have the initiation, then fire integration, and then document delivery. So when I click on document delivery, here I can put up my delivery information. Say from this integration process, delivery attempts, transport to SFTP or whichever method that uh, has been agreed between uh, the two parties. Then comes the SFTP information, the address, the directory, the authentication method, and you can have more than one delivery. Like if you need to have SFTP and then say you need to send it via So transport and payload. Okay, so if I need to add another payload component, I may be able to do that. So say for example, I press okay. It's not letting me configure the payload information. Then let's keep it one. And once I've set up my business process definition, 
of course uh, i need to be part of the integration uh, user group for the security and i should have access to the worker domain to where i'm fetching all this data for integration permissions and then from here i think uh, we can then go back to our uh, chapter where we are going to start discussing how we launch the integration All right. So we've created an integration system. We have seen the integration services, the attributes, the field attributes, the field overrides, and how do we configure the integration maps? So let's see how do we launch an integration system. So to launch an integration system, run the launch schedule integration task. This task can be run directly or it can be accessed by integration systems related action icon and selecting the integration launch schedule. See, for example, integration systems. So we're going to use this, say, worker effective changes. So I can go to the related actions, go to integrations, similar to what we have seen in EIBs. So run now. And then I will be on this page where I have to set up the integration criteria. So let's see what the criteria are. So we've gone to the integration uh, related action menu and then launch or schedule the integration so the launch schedule integration task has the following parameters the integration site this parameter specifies the integration system you wish to launch integration systems that currently have critical errors in the configuration cannot be selected if accessing this task via the related actions of an integration system, the integration parameters will be pre-populated. See the organization. So if you intend to run the integration immediately, select the organization for which you want to run the integration. The prompt does uh, varies depending on the integration process, even on your security access. And then the run frequency. Do I want to launch it now or do I want to set up a schedule around it? So the run frequency parameter defaults to run now, which represents an ad hoc run at the moment. This would be considered a manual launch. Selecting any other frequency will be used to configure schedule launch. The scheduled frequencies are run once in the future, minute recurrence, hourly recurrence, daily recurrence, weekly and monthly recurrences. So launching an integration system. So after providing the parameters to the launch schedule integration task and clicking OK, you will be taken to the schedule and integration page. For core connected worker integration, there are seven launch parameters. The core connected data launch parameter extracts records that are current as of the specified date of entry movement and effective date parameters. If the full file is not selected, then the extra includes only those records that are detected to have change in one or more output fields as compared to what was current as of the last successful, as of the entry movement and last successful effective date parameters. So if they are, integration is running on a schedule and if you're not uh, needing to send a complete full file, of your integration and all the tenant worker details, then you can only send the change details files as well. So going back to the integration, so restrict results by say organization, say I'm going to select GMS USA. If I need to exclude a subordinate, I can do that. Is it a primary run? Is it a full snapshot? If I need to 
send it for specific workers. I can set it up or I can exclude it. Exclude members only, include members only. So include specified members from effective date. Say I want it to run from say Thursday. From as of entry moment, say, for example, if this is in uh, schedule event, say it ran on last Monday, effective date. Say I want it to be 01 01 2021. And as of entry moment, again, say I want to keep it on 8.30. And change detection, include all changes in effective date range and include only changes entered since the last successful run. And say I run it. Now, when I press OK, it is going to launch that integration. So below, I can see all the details that the integration even parameters are set up. So it is in the process of initializing the worker integration data. So here I can see the integration process details, apparent even the integration type, the integration system that we're using, was it initiated by the date, ran as, and say so if I go to the process information, Give me the details, the process history, what is currently being happening in the process, child processes. Because I have put the effective date from 01 01 2021 from effective date. So it's going to go through the system for the, for the entire year, collecting all the changes for each and every worker and populating this information.
the integration has resulted and it has completed successfully. So if I look at the integration details, so integration is completed. If I want to look at the process information, I can do that. Process history, what steps it took. The output files would have, they did a changes audit HTML, then did a changes and worker effective stacks, worker effective changes. So for example, if I click on data changes, so extract summary has, here, uh, answering your questions, a full snapshot is false currently. So it didn't send the information uh, for full file. Now, unfortunately, it did not pull up any of the data for workers. So let me look at any other integration that has already completed. See, for example, for this particular core character for organization, if I look at the agnostic HTML, So basically, this is a file that has been created by our integration and it has been shared with the vendor. So the header, organization details, and then it would have information about organization description, whether it's an active, who's the manager, the organization owner, the location, business site reference, and so on. And this is a complete output of our file. Now, for example, if any of the integration that is managing changes, say INTEGR instance, I'm trying to look for integration which would have changes in them. And there's an interface where it will show me all the changes that has been included or in the output file. So it's TMSCIB data load, core connector. No, even this does not have changes in this. Okay. 
and when this one doesn't have information in the, so, so this is an EAB transformation now. So generally speaking, uh, in my integration and in my output file, I should be able to see uh, if I'm sending the changes only, where I would get an information, something like this. So this is a data change audit file which is included in part of the integration. So it would include all the changes uh, that was part of the integration. And say, for example, if I say show all, I can see the current values, the status that has changed would be in a different color. And I can see all the changes for each and every record. for each and every employee or whatever uh, I'm running. So this is basically a new hire yeah, integration with Active Directory, and that's the output of it. So it's basically sending all this information, uh, like the first name, last name, address, phone numbers, status, position details. So you can see the current value and prior value. So what was the current value? What was the prior value? So the position value, has not changed. The current value has changed for the position. And you'll see the difference report available with your integration when you're only uh, sending out the file for changes.